Okay, so in this uh, video, we are going to discuss about limit of functions. So as you know, we are going to take a function from say R2 to R, which is a function of two variables and which is a real valued function, which I have explained in the previous lecture. Okay, and now we are going to define uh, the limit of this function. So I will take a point A comma B in the set R2. So suppose I'll show you the picture. So I'm going to take a point A comma B and I have to define the function at the limit of the function at this point. So what I want to actually calculate or discuss is what is the limit of f of x, y if this x comma y tends to the point a comma b. I want to teach you what is this definition of limit and this is equal to how much and this is equal to l. So this definition is the epsilon delta definition which we call. So what is that definition? So I will give you an epsilon. So given an epsilon positive and epsilon is a small positive number. Okay. We must be able to we must be able to find a small positive number delta okay such that whenever x and y are in the x and y are so which type of neighborhood is this this is the circular neighborhood so whenever x and y is in the circular neighborhood on what is this what is the radius of the circular neighborhood that i want i want it to be this delta so where is point x and y now x and y is in the circular neighborhood of ab right so x minus a whole square this was the discussed in the previous lecture circular neighborhood means what plus y minus b square this should be less than delta and i don't want it this so this x y i don't want to equal to a comma b i don't want x and y equal to a comma b so i'm going to put a positive sign so now x cannot be a y cannot be b okay i don't want x and y directly to reach the point a Okay, in this case, then what should happen? This implies means a then fx, y, and l. These two things, fx, y, and l, they also must be very, very close to each other. Means the distance between fx, y, and l modulus. What is the meaning of modulus of something minus something? Means the distance between those two things should be what should be less than epsilon who is epsilon epsilon is also very small so what does this definition say what does this epsilon delta definition say that if x and y are very very close to a b how much is the distance between them the distance is at max delta at that situation what should happen fx and l these two things also should be very close to each other means fx minus fx y minus l should be less than epsilon so this is the definition there are some problems we are going to solve in the next lecture about finding delta if epsilon is given and if the limit is also given to us. Everything is given to us. We just have to choose a, a we just have to take a delta and to find an appropriate, you have to take an epsilon, sorry, and you have to find the correct delta for that related problem. If you can do that, it means that this limit of f of xy will be equal to l. So this is called as an analytical definition of limit. Right. And now if I want to say the same thing for instead of limit, I want to say that the function is continuous. So I'm going to discuss now continuity at the point A comma B. So right. So this definition will slightly take change. So if it is continuous, first of all, this limit of the function should be equal to value of the function. This is what we have heard since our previous classes that limit of the function must be equal to value of the function. Value of the function is how much x and a will be equal to how much a comma b. So this is nothing but continuity of the function means limit of the function equals the value.
that is the function what is the analytical definition telling you the analytical definition will be somewhat same slight changes will be there given epsilon positive we must be able to find a delta such that now x and y can become a comma b so x and y can also become a comma b so this condition will go away right so x and y are allowed to become a and b in the definition of continuity in the definition of the limit they are not allowed to become a and b means this 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 has to be what greater than zero then so if this x minus a y minus b square is there than delta means x y lies in the circular neighborhood of a comma b then f of x y minus l should be less than epsilon this becomes the definition of continuity for functions from r2 to r3 or functions from r3 to uh, r2 to r r3 to r and so on right so i hope the definitions of the, the continuity and limits are both clear we will discuss the problems in the next lecture right now there are two types of limits in this chapter okay so there are two types of limits so let us discuss the two types of limits right so when i say so the first type of limit, limit is called as simultaneous limit simultaneous limits okay what is meant by simultaneous limit means x and y will simultaneously move towards the point a comma b okay and that is f of x y so the limit of f of x y x and y both are moving right both the points are moving so let me show you in picture like this so this is x comma y so at this say at, at a time both the uh, x and y are moving towards a comma b x coordinate is also moving and y coordinate is also moving that is called a simultaneous limit and this is equal to l say some limit f okay if it exists the second type of limit is nothing but called as repeated limits what happens in repeated limits now the situation is different so let me make a picture larger for you for repeated limits so that you understand the difference between simultaneous limits and repeated limits so if this is that delta neighborhood of point ab and here i have point x comma y okay now here if x and x comma y direct move towards a comma b which type of limit is this x is also moving the x coordinate was also moving the y coordinate is also moving right so this is the which type of limit simultaneous limits now what i have to do is i will only move first x so this is x this is a this is b and this is y correct so i will not pay attention towards b and y right now okay when i'm thinking of which type of limits of about the simultaneous limits so what will i do first i will first say let x move from a to towards a so x is moving towards a so limit for f of x y it really so here i have a limit x is moving towards a and then you reach here and then you move from y to b like this this part so this is one way to reach from x y to ab first come along x axis then go along y axis this is limit y tending to b this is l this is something let's not call it l because this simultaneous limit i have called l let me call it l okay it may be different okay limit simultaneous limit if it is coming l not necessarily this limit across this path will also be l it may be different okay so this is the first repeated type of limit uh, or other wise what can you do now instead of going with x axis par with parallel with x axis and then with y axis what another path I, you can choose is you will say fine i will go from like this so which is this limit so obviously that is limit of the function f of x y with y tending to b first so let y tend to b right y is going from y is tending to b and then after that i will take x tending to i see x is tending to a limit x tending to a 
right? And this is some other answer. So this may be n. See, this also need not be same. Okay. Limit across horizontal x and then vertical y, or limit across horizontal y, vertical y and then x. These two limits may be different. They need not be same. Okay. And these two limits, along with this limit, they also may not be the same. Okay. So I am not making any uh, any firm conclusion. But I am not assuming that everything will come to be same. Okay, they may at times they may come different. Under some conditions, these people become equal. That we will discuss in problems. Okay, so now I hope the concept of repeated limit is also understood, and the concept of simultaneous limit is also understood. I hope simultaneous limit is clear. Right, what happens in simultaneous limit? X and Y both move together. For for example, see this is an I give one example of simultaneous limit. Yes, if I draw paths from this to this. And in this case, what is happening? In this case, x is also moving and y is also moving. X is also going from a to uh, x to a, and here also y is going from y to b. Okay, the the variable y is going to b. Right? At the at the same time, both of them are changing. But for repeated and uh, for repeated, what happens? At times you go parallel x, and that time you don't change y, but then you later on change y. Or if I go the go along the what this path, what happens in this part? X is not changing, only Y is changing. Y coordinates change. Afterwards, X is changing. So it is this part. So these two types of limits are repeated limits. Clear? So in the next lecture, we will solve problems on simultaneous limits and repeated limits.